Hi, welcome to this video on Redox. This is from the OCR A-level spec. We're going to look at oxidation state and the rules for identifying oxidation states and then some Redox reactions. So start with oxidation state. This is just a hypothetical value we apply to atoms when they're bonded or unbonded. And we say, well, if it was an ionic bond, where would the electrons go? And obviously this doesn't always happen, electrons kind of sit somewhere in between, but it's, so it's a hypothetical kind of estimation of where the electrons kind of gone. So we've got a set of rules we need to follow. Now different textbooks will give you different sets of rules and we'll have some that maybe I haven't mentioned in mine, but I'm going to go through kind of the important ones. So elements from groups one, two, and three, when bonded, have oxidation states equal to plus one, plus two, and plus three, respectively. So group two will have plus two, group three plus three, group one plus one. So if we take sodium fluoride, here we've got sodium and fluorine, sodium is group one, sodium is plus one. So fluorine is always minus one. It's the most electronegative atom, so it always manages to draw electrons towards it. Three, hydrogen is usually plus one. And that's when it's covalently bonded. It's not very electronegative. So if we take an example here, when it's with HCl, the electrons move towards the chlorine, so we get plus one hydrogen, minus one chlorine. The exception is when it's bonded to a metal, because then it's more electronegative than the metal, we get an ionic bond. Anyway, the electrons go towards the sodium, so then hydrogen becomes minus one. So it's usually plus one in a covalent bond. When it starts to bond with metals, though, it goes to minus one. Oxygen is usually minus two. Very electronegative, draws electrons towards it. So in H2O, it'll draw electrons from either hydrogen to become minus two. Each hydrogen we've already seen is plus one. The exception to this rule is when it's hydrogen peroxide H2O2 and that's because there's only two hydrogens for the two oxygens so they can only draw one electron towards it so in hydrogen peroxide they're each minus one and minus one and each hydrogen is plus one uh, chlorine is usually minus one that when it's bonded something more electronegative. So if it's going to a bond with a fluorine. So we saw up here in HCl, it was minus one. There are basic rules. So for the different elements, once they start to bond, then we have the sum of a compound so the sum of all oxidation states in a compound with zero charge equals zero. So all of these, they don't have charges on them. If we add up all the oxidation states, it'll equal zero. So plus one and minus one, zero. Plus one, minus one equals zero. Here we've got two plus ones. So that's plus two and a minus two. Here, plus one, plus one. So it gives me plus two and two minuses for minus two. I need to move my board up slightly. And then seven, the sum of all oxidation states of an ion equals the charge on the ion. So I'm going to take one 
example that comes up quite a bit on this one. Rub this out. We're going to look at the dichromatine because it's quite a complicated one. So. This is dichromate. Two chromiums, seven oxygens. We've already seen oxygen has the oxidation state minus two. So within this, we can then say, well, we've got 14 negative charge then, 14 electrons are moved across. Overall, we've got two minus. So this means that the chromium must, when we add both of them together, must be plus 12 in order for the charge to overall be 2 minus. And that's why in dichromate, chromium has the plus 6 oxidation state. So a very high oxidation state. We'll look at another example of this. If we look at an atom, uh, sorry, not an atom, we'll look at the compound, we'll look at potassium manganate. So this isn't an ion, it's got no charge at the end of this compound, so we know again oxygen is minus 2, so that gives me minus 8 here because there's 4 oxygens. Potassium is in group 1, so it will be plus 1 and there's only one of them. So now we need to work out what that manganese is. Manganese is in the D block, it's a transition metal. So it's actually got variable oxidation states. There's no set rule for what manganese could be. So if we have a look here, we can see that it's got to, all of these added together has got to equal zero because there's no charge. So therefore, it must be plus seven in order to get plus one, plus seven, minus eight, equal to zero. And that's oxidation states and assigning oxidation states. Next we've got redox. Now redox is a reaction where something gets reduced. So one species gets reduced and one species gets oxidized. And we've got reduction, oxidation. Put them together for redox. So we've got a nice little mnemonic to remember this. called oil rig. So in this, oxidation occurs when an element loses, an atom loses electrons. So oxidation is loss. We're saying loss of electrons. So an example of this would be magnesium, which as an element has no oxidation state going to Mg2+. Plus. This is oxidation. It has lost two electrons. Reduction is the gain of electrons. So oil ring. So reduction will be let's say we took an oxygen atom gains two electrons. So oxygen plus two electrons goes to O2 minus. So it's gaining electrons, we can say that this is reduction. And so these are just little half equations. We can actually combine these and show you a redox reaction. And we'll look at some examples of redox reactions. So magnesium plus O2 goes to MgO. So just to put the oxidation states in, we've got magnesium here, which is zero because it's uh, on its own, it's not bonded to anything. And oxygen here, bonded to itself, no charge. So that's zero as well. So at the moment, they've not given or taken electrons hypothetically away from anything. Over here, though, because an ionic bond forms, magnesium becomes plus 2, oxygen minus 2. 
So magnesium has gone from zero to plus two and therefore has been oxidized. Oxygen has gone from O2 from O to minus two and has therefore been reduced. And what I should do here is actually balance my equation. That's pretty bad I've gone through that without balancing it. It makes no difference to the oxidation states. Here we've just got two magnesiums with oxidation state zero over here, two with oxidation state plus two. Uh, so yeah, the balancing numbers don't affect the oxidation states. And have another another look at a similar reaction. If we go with zinc reacting with copper sulfate. Goes to Cu plus ZnSO4. It's worth remembering this one and have a look. If we assign oxidation numbers. Go here, the zinc is zero. Now the sulfate ion is one of the polyatomic ions you need to remember. It is SO4, two minus. So overall it's got a charge of two minus. And we can go through why that is. We've got oh, sorry. oxygen here with minus two. Sulfur in this case is plus six. But there's four oxygens, so overall we get minus eight. And that's why we've got two minus there. So copper here is plus two to balance out that two minus. So I'll put all the oxidation states in. Here, copper on its own. So it's zero with no charge. Zinc over here, now swap, become two plus. The sulfate still plus six. And the oxygen still minus two. So zinc has gone from zero to plus two. So if it's got more positive, it must have lost electrons and oxidation is lost. So it has become oxidized. Copper has gone from plus two to zero, so it must have been reduced because it's got more negative. It's moved towards the negative side. It's gained two electrons. And that is a brief bit of redox.